trace Casamigos to the face Baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make Everything just fade away Cause she's like Sex, drugs, cocaine, vice So insane Jealous of the clothing That she wears up on a tight frame All game, no shame Baby, can't get a play I feel like an addict Cause she's sex, drugs, cocaine Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ambassador of the World Wrestling Network, Trevin Adams, joined by a former ACW Tag Team Champion, the one and only D'Lo Jordan. Yes, I've been dying to do this, and here we go, back for another edition of WWN Proven Ground. Trevin, it's a pleasure. We're glad to have you here, looking forward to your insights as we get ready for this Tag Team Contest. Better together making their debut here, WWM Proving Ground. And D'Lo, I gotta say, these two young men, not only do they come in with a ton of training and street cred, but it's kind of amazing to think about the fact that, in the case of Ori Gold, started wrestling at 14, he's 21 now, by the way, and Hador Horvitz started wrestling at 13, and he's 22 now. So between the two of them, you got what, 18 years of experience, 17, something like that? That's absolutely incredible. You wouldn't tell these guys are that young just by looking at them at all. They seem so seasoned and polished. And I've seen these guys a couple times in person. I've been nothing but impressed. Of course, the tag team about to come out. No strangers to WWE Improving Ground. I'm expecting WWE Unfaithful to come unglued when they see Chris Malachite and Puma Johnson. Two young men currently doing their training down in Miami with soul man Alex G. It's been awesome seeing these guys in WWE Improving Ground. You've had quite a few interactions with them yourself, d -Lo. Yes, absolutely. These guys are pretty impressive in person. Now, soul man Alex G is a name that's familiar to me. That I go far back with that guy. Uh, we, we used to work out in Minneota for... Um, WXW, the Wild Samoans. So I'm very familiar with Alex G and his uh, training methods. So it makes sense why these guys are as polished and impressive as they are. What is happening right now? You're about to get your butt beat. That's what you're a dar. The smack talk. Your first American boyfriend, Billy Grace, calling things down the middle here. All right, here we go. Puma Johnson starting things for his team. He's the guy that grew up on the gritty streets of the Bahamas. It's really a tough young man, and you'll see when it comes to the ability to hit you hard, Puma Johnson brings it. A lot of mouth on these guys here, Trevin. <laughs> exactly. You hear Ori Gold, all that yelling out there, and Hador Horvitz getting a little cocky. I would not take my eyes off of Puma Johnson. Yeah, maybe losing sight of the objective here a little bit. I'm not going to lie, though. I want some of what these guys had. But there's so much energy in Better Together. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, they're pumped. Question is, will that translate in the ring as Hidara goes right from Puma? Gets caught, though. 
Now we already talked about the fact that both both of these athletes starting training so early in Israel. Look at Puma Johnson. Incredibly impressive and in the case of Hadar in some trouble here. Some beautiful technique on display there, Trevin. Puma up and over. We've seen the agility of the Black Puma. Oh, nice drop kick. Into the pin. Emphatic kick out, though, by Hador Horowitz. And now Chris Malachi tagged in. But what is this? Ori Gold coming in to save Hadar. This thing's breaking down. Did I miss a blind tag or something? No, I think the ref missed it. Pin again. Two count only this time. Jardy seeing that, uh, well, I guess better together and living up to their moniker. They are better together. <laughs> Absolutely. The rules are made to be broken. Of course, both Hadar and Ori spending time at flatbacks with Sean Spears, Tyler Breeze on top of the training they had in Israel. And look at the leg sweep there. Inadvertent taking out his partner. Unless, yeah, I'm gonna guess it wasn't pulled. Bit of miscommunication there. Quite a bit. I guess they just need a moment now to regroup. Well, we got a 10 count here. It looks like Better Together may try to take all of it. Yeah, they're gonna take their time on this one, Trevor. Malachi taken out Ori Gold, but caught by Hadar Horvitz. Of course, Hadar the one who's legal. Once the youngest wrestler in Israel. Wow, that's impressive. Well, again, starting at 13. I mean, it's crazy when you look at the, the talent level with both of Better Together. Young men, so good, so quick. And the tag there to Ori Gold. There's the tag. And, of course, in addition to the time at Flatbacks, they've... they've Went over the tutelage of guys like Walter, now known as uh, Gunther. And the boot there to Malachite. See, Malachite in some trouble here, Devo. Yeah, it looks like it. Vertical suplex. What's crazy, too, is both men and better together have known each other for over 10 years. The pitfall. Two count only, but if you think about it, again, th this becomes the proverbial brothers from different mothers. Exactly. They definitely have the uh, experience and familiarity advantage. Pumi and Chris Malachite probably not been teaming that long together. No, indeed. Puma, especially only being about a year or so in the sport, Malachite a little over four, but there were some breaks in there. And of course, Ori Gold can brag that he wrestled in three continents before he was 20. Hadar now tagged in. Wow, that's impressive. I'm trying to think if I've been to three continents yet, Dilo. And actually, I have. Just barely. Oh, now the shot to the ribs right there. As well as provoking Puma Johnson. And did I just hear a clap, and we're going to pretend we tagged here, from our friends at Better Together? Perhaps not. You just never know what these guys are up to. Uh, no, no shenanigans. I'm just so good, so good. Taking your eyes off Malachite, not a smart move by Hadar. But the offensive of Malachite was stopped. Shut down. And for a, a team, once again, making their debut at WWE Improving Ground, Losing confidence, what a leg area. Oh, very nice. Well done. Two count only, and what a reaction from Horvitz there. What are you talking about? What are you He's gotta watch his temper here. Keep things under control. Stay focused. Malachite. Having the time to recover, perhaps. And very nonchalant, Hadar just kicking this young man. But unfortunately for Malachite, ending up in the wrong corner. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely going to want to keep the pressure on Malachite here. They can't get too sloppy. Ori now the legal man swinging at Puma. Oh, swinging a miss. 
Well, that's it. I think Ori was trying to provoke Puma. Puma able to maintain some composure. Fortunately for Malachite, though, wrong side of town. What a beating. Definitely in the wrong neighborhood here, Trevin. Yeah, tag now to Hadar. Got to give it to better, better together. They're annoying as hell, but thus far looking like a unit. There's any flaw in the game, Trevin. They're, they're giving Malachite a lot of breathing room here. Yeah, I think they were thinking uh, perhaps the, together forever, but Malachite now getting away and a tag to Puma. Yeah, they gave him too, too much room to breathe there. Good little moment you're seeing right there, that speed, the agility, like a cat. Puma living up to the moniker. And it looks like a big slam on Hadar. Nope. Squats first. Impressive. Oh, he's got put some squats in there. Very nice. Yeah, the pin. Oh, Lori Gold saving things for better together. Almost had him. And reversal there. Tosses Malachite out. Fish will give it a lot of latitude here. They have a chance here. Two on one. Oh! Oof. The spinning forearm. Taking out Ori, and now that lung blower pitfall. My God, that's it. Three count. Big win here for Puma Johnson, Chris Malachite. Got to give it, though. Better together. Very impressive in their debut. Memorable for sure, but as we already mentioned, a few mistakes there perhaps taking the eye off the ball. They just didn't stay focused, Trevor, and that's what the issue was here. Chris Malachi and Puma with the win. Very impressive tag match. I highly doubt Hadar needed any form of uh, <laughs> CPR or resuscitation, but what the heck. Once again, better together, making their WWN debut. Can't wait to see more of these guys. Come see Proving Ground Live every Friday night at Ritchie Racquetball and Sports Club in Port Ritchie, Florida at 7 p.m. Step inside the new WWN Training Center for an experience like no other. Proving Ground is a night of fun for the whole family. Tickets are available at the door and seating is limited. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Again, at WWN Proving Ground, and I got the biggest opportunity in my life is just to win the, you know what, I'm not going to claim it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm putting my hard work and effort and get in that ring and do what I do best, and that's being the real X Factor, Xander Maddox. Look who it is. Uh, excuse me. Um, what's going on here? Could we could we get an explanation of this? What's going on? You're seeing the two best looking, two most talented wrestlers here at WWE Improved Ground. Meet the suplex queen, Tiny Tonnelly. And now that I am done with Sam C. You know, I've been him so many times. It's ridiculous. How many times was it? I don't know, like 70 million times. That's what it feels like. Now I can move on to bigger and better things. 
Now my opponent tonight is not bigger or better, you know, Xander Maddox. He's kind of smaller and weaker and more pathetic. But uh, the same result will happen. Brian Atomic standing tall with his ACW Cruiserweight Championship because I am Atomic. Boom, baby. Boom. Right, let's go. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is for the ACW Cruiserweight Championship. Here we are, the Xander Maddox getting a huge opportunity here tonight, WWM Proving Ground, to become the 8CW Cruiserweight Champion. And I'll tell you, D'Lo, back episode 11, Team Florida impressed. And I'd be excited to see here, can Xander Maddox do the same as his partners from episode 11 did and get that win tonight? This this here's got to be the opportunity of a New lifetime champ. for Xander Maddox, and there you hear it, the crowd. New champ, they're, they're calling it, they're anticipating it. And of course that young lady, the difference maker at episode 11, Tiny Tonnelly, Joining Brian Atomic, and Atomic who had lost by disqualification to Samuel C. at episode 10, found himself in a situation where disqualification loss would mean a title change. So, wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know, Brian Atomic expands the team, so to speak, and yet again escapes, this time by countout from Samuel C. I get the feeling though, D'Lo, things are not over between Brian Atomic and Samuel C. The question though, is will Atomic get through tonight still our ACW Cruiserweight Champion. Here's a guy, Trevin, Brian Atomic, who I don't know if it's desperation or the fact that he will do anything, and I mean anything, to hold on to that ACW Cruiserweight uh, Championship. I don't know whether to admire him or despise him, but we've seen everything that this guy will do Big fight feel here at WWE Improving Ground. Oh, Rick Thames, what's going on, or Commissioner? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've witnessed here in the past recent few weeks, the activities coming out of one set champion here, Brian Atomic. Here in the WWN Training Center Proving Ground, that's not the way to conduct yourself with the champion. Commissioner of WWNTC Proving Grounds. Things are gonna change, folks, especially out of the champions. What I have for you, especially what you did at San Jose the last time, two weeks ago when you were out there, I have a remedy for you. Excuse me? I, you will listen to me. Yeah, you beat him. It's the way you beat him, pal. But I have, I have a remedy for that right now. Sammy C, Sammy C, come out here, buddy. <laughs> 
what's going on here? Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is, Trevin? One well, conclusion. Sam C has a referee shirt on. WWE Commissioner Rick Daves has appointed Samuel C the official for this matchup. Now, Trevin, I'm all for fairness, but this the, the odds have got to be against Brian Atomic here, considering their history. Here's one thing I can say about Sam, you'll see. I think Sam's the last guy who would give either of these men an advantage. So as much as, yes indeed, Brian Atomic going after the knee immediately of Xander Maddox. Sam starting things. Of course, Sam, you'll see, is not going to give any latitude to Brian Atomic, but oof, the attack on the knee to Xander. Atomic now, conversely, better not waste his time arguing with Samuel C. Yeah, he's got to try to put Sam C out of his mind for the time being and focus on Xander Maddox. Yeah, and of course, Xander Maddox, we've seen how tough Xander is since appearing here on WWE Improving Ground. Ooh, what a chop. Big opportunity once again for this young man. All the cruiserweights here in WWE, and you're hungry for gold, and I think that's what Atomic is finding out now that he's champion, but what a kick. An Atomic kick. Are we already at that point in the match where everything's Atomic? <laughs> You see Brian Atomic perhaps taking Xander Maddox a little lightly. And I would argue that's a mistake. We'll see. So far, Sam C calling this thing down the middle, it appears. Well, I don't, again, I don't expect Sam, and, and of course, expect the unexpected, but I do not expect Sam. Beautiful drop kicks by Xander Maddox to do anything that isn't calling this match down the middle. Now the pin. But again, for Atomic, for instance, Tiny Tonnelly, if Tiny tries to get involved, even remotely, you gotta think Samuel C is gonna be looking for it as Xander Maddox tossed into the ropes. Oh, just like that, Atomic turns things around. Yeah, I think there's not a shortcut that Atomic will not take. A beautiful kick. Oh, rocking Xander Maddox and Tiny Tonnelly <laughs> waving off. Oh, that was a little bit of a fast 10 count. Whoa. That, yeah, that that count wasn't on the up and up. Okay, that's a very slow. So it begins. Well, Trevin, I warned you. You called it, and I said there's no way Sam would be like this, but... By the same token, you can't say Brian Atomic has an earned it. There's some bad blood between Sam C and Brian Atomic, so it, it was a surprise to me that he was going to call this thing down the middle, but now we see. The continuing attack on the knee by Brian Atomic. He's been going after Xander Maddox since Xander did not have his eye on Atomic before the match began. That chop block. Right, that very first strike. It's really been all atomic so far. Using the ropes as a weapon there, and at least Sam with a uh, reasonable cadence on that five count. A little faster on that one. Well, yeah, a, a slightly quick five count there. And Atomic showing some frustration and the counter into the pin. Oh, hair away from a new champion. Almost had it right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, Larry took that head off of Xander Maddox. Hey, somebody take a picture. Take a picture. Oh, oh, come on now. Finally going in for the pin and. I guess Samuel C is not quite used to the duties of an official, thinking it was time for photo ops. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, that's what it's all about, coming to WWE Improving Ground Live every Friday night at the WWE Training Center, but that distraction giving Xander Maddox time to come back. Thomas going to want to keep his eye on the ball here and try to put Sam C out of his mind. Xander Maddox, we've seen Xander Maddox take beatings before at WWM Proving Ground and persevere. So this advantage now is definitely not helping Brian Atomic. Albeit, you see the velocity in which Atomic just tossed Xander into the corner, but Xander gets out of the way of the kick this time. Ooh. Yeah, Atomic's starting to telegraph these things. Went to the well one too many times. Deadlift release German suplex rocks Brian Atomic. Can we have a new champ? Hair away. And what does it say about Sam C that he's okay with the fact that Brian Atomic could lose that championship here tonight? Well, you figure Sam would want to be the one to take it off of him, but uh, I, I think his hatred for Brian Atomic is clouding his judgment here. You'd want to think that uh, Xander Maddox would also, if he became champion tonight, be willing to give Samuel C an opportunity. But, ooh, heel kick rocks Atomic. Very nice. You see Atomic the egress outside of the ring, and there's Tiny Tonnelly. Championship in hand, and where are they going? Wait a minute. Yeah, Samuel C taking the belt. Toss it Atomic in the ring. <laughs> Atomic walks right into that insecurity. Oh. Dilo, I think this really could be the beginning of the end for Brian Atomic. Yeah, especially with Sam C as the referee here. But hey, credit to the champion, catches the challenger while Xander was climbing to the top. Xander trying to fight off Atomic. Both men jockeying for position here. Ooh, what a headbutt. Atomic finally crumples down. What's Maddox got? Setting up for something here. Sling blade coming off the top. Could we have a new champion? One, two, oh! So close. Oh, it doesn't get any closer without the bell ringing, Trevin. And while this distraction's happening, what is Tiny Tonnelly doing? What does Atomic have? You can see our official Samuel C, special official tonight, and has no clue. The distraction from Tiny here and inside of the ring. Whatever's in the hand there of Atomic just takes out Xander Maddox. Not like this. Atomic wins. You're kidding me. But what was in the hand, Trevin? Absolutely a foreign object of some kind. Difference maker knocking out Xander Maddox and the official had no clue. Distracted by Tiny Tonnelly and yet again, Tiny Tonnelly shows worth her weight in gold here when it comes to Brian Atomic's ACW Cruiserweight Championship raid. Absolutely. Tiny paying dividends. What? Wait a minute, what is that? I don't think it's a new champion, Sam. Is he reversing to the decision here? The title cannot change hands via disqualification. What's going on here? Yeah, unfortunately.
This is what we're going to put a stop to. The winner, sadly to say, is Brian Atomic. We'll get what? Right what? No, no, no. no. Well, that clears things up, Trevin. So your winner, your winner of the match is Xander Maddox by disqualification. But that means Brian Atomic holds on to that Cruiserweight Championship for one more week. You can see the chaos here and confusion. Absolute confusion. Definitely not the result any of these athletes would have wanted here, but great showing by Xander Maddox. It's a match I'd love to see again someday, but as I've already said a couple times tonight, you got to thank Samuel C., Brian Atomic. More to come with those two. We hear, how do I become a professional wrestler? How do I get into the business? Now's your chance. The WWNTC is the place to be. I'm taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop off with the new rock. It goes beyond just wrestling in the ring. We teach you fitness, nutrition, and everything in between, even developing your own unique wrestling persona, and then we get you on shows after you're done with your training. Cause I don't need saving. It's everything I've been chasing. All here for the taking. Don't want to test your luck with me I think I've had enough disease I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are half ones You are not as tough as <laughs> In 2017, I stepped foot into the WWNTC Center for the very first time And that's where I met you, Francisco Chiazzo The head trainer of the WWN Training Center. You taught me the ropes. You taught me respect. You taught me how to be tough. And that's what made me the number one draft pick everywhere I went here in the state of Florida. And it all comes back to this Friday night at WWN Training Center. When it's Johnny Zeke versus Francisco Chiazzo in a student versus teachers match. And when school's out and the big lights go on, it's game day, baby! Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a teacher versus student challenge match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. Definitely excited for this matchup. D'Lo, you got a WWNTC alum and the current head trainer of the WWNTC, Francisco Chiazzo, and a man who has more than caused some trouble here in WWN Proving Ground since aligning himself for Richport Ayala. Absolutely, Trevin. This unholy alliance has been wreaking havoc as they see fit, as they please. Rich Porteala, Francisco Piazzo. Yeah, Ayala was good before the tutelage of Francisco Piazzo. Since, 
become absolutely top tier, but right now, Francisco Chiazzo here to do his own fighting. Introducing the student. Let's go! Talked about living up to monikers. Uh, Johnny Zeke absolutely seems like it's game day. Talk about some energy on the entrance. But Dila, we both know Francisco Piazzo for a long, long time. And if there's anything I can tell you with confidence when it comes to Piazzo is that's a man who has absolutely not shown the whole playbook to his students when he's been tr head trainer of the WWN TC. I would like to agree with that. Francisco Piazza is a very dangerous man, and he might he might not always come off like it. But Johnny Zeke's definitely got an uphill battle here. Let's see, let's see if he's learned enough to overcome Francisco Piazza. But like you said, Piazza might have taught him everything he knows, but Piazza did not teach Johnny Zeke everything Frankie knows. Or Zeke, not surprisingly, the fan favorite here for the WWE Unfaithful. But as stated, Kiato has been in the sport over 20 years. Fought all over the world. It's going to take a lot to phase Francisco Kiato. Oh, what a chop. And followed back up. Some viciousness here to the offense of Kiato. And you got to, of course, keep an eye on Richport Ayala. And you notice, Ayala never taking his eyes off of Big Zeke. It's got to be hard trying to trying to go head to head with Siazzo, and then and then you have this presence looming at uh, ringside. Zeke's got to have eyes in the back of his head here. You'd almost think the way Kiazzo is treating this thing, he's thinking it's a like a sparring type situation at a session of the WWN Training Center. And Francisco has underestimated Johnny Zeke. I mean, you heard Zeke it was 2017 when Zeke began training. A lot of time has passed. There's a lot of experience the big man has. Kiazzo may find out the hard way what happens when you underestimate a former student. Of course, right now, the head of Big Johnny Zeke has to feel like it's being crushed. But the body of Francisco getting crushed. What a chop. Is that it? Is Kiazzo out of here? Now it's a 10 count. One thing about the unique setting of the WWN Training Center is... Not a lot of real estate between the entrance and the ring. No, not at all. In fact, you can see three walls covered, really. It's kind of like the Kumite here. You get in, you fight, you're in the pit. Finally back in now is uh, Kiazzo. And as these two men tangle up here, Starting with the fundamentals, you notice Big Zeke getting the better of Kiato this time. Forcing the break. You notice Zeke a nice clean break. Oh, Kiato took his eyes off of Zeke. And Big Bad again with the armbar. Zeke might be Zeke might be able to out wrestle Frankie here. Oh, that low blow. Official Billy Grace has no clue there was a kick there. Ref did not see it. And leave it to Chiazzo. I was about to follow up your comment, D'Lo, to say, indeed, how embarrassing would it be for Francisco Chiazzo without wrestled by a former student? And, well, of course, taking a shortcut, but right back to the armbar. 
Big Zeke. Yeah, it looks like it's headed in that direction, Trevin. Well, despite the, the kick, Gyatso was doing that with his back to Zeke, so you couldn't quite know how well placed the kick was. Looks like Zeke had some time to recover, but ripping at the face is Kiatsu. Come on. Oh, Johnny just being tossed across the ring. What a kick to the back. Now the pin. The two count only here. How would you handle this, D'Lo? Having Rich Portayala outside of the ring, having a veteran like Francisco Chiazzo inside of the ring. How do you focus? Well, it's pretty difficult, but you gotta you gotta have that tunnel vision. You gotta focus on the man in the ring. That's easier said than done when you're standing across the ring from Francisco Chiazzo. And you hear the WWE faithful trying to will Big Zeke back to his feet, but unfortunately, lights could be out here for the big man. Yeah, Zeke might not be able to make a rally here. I'll prove it is wrong, perhaps. Yep. The adrenaline could be flowing. Just picture the lights start going out, everything starts getting dark, and then all of a sudden, this jolt, the energy, and you got the people behind you. And the chin breaker. Can Johnny Zeke do it? in the fist of Francisco, returned fire by Zeke. I think the, the teacher's in trouble here. Absolutely. Zeke is feeling himself now. Caught charging in, though. And that just little moment when he said, game over, teach, let himself be caught by Kiato and was the That might be it. I think you're right. That's it. D. Kiato wins. Great effort by Johnny Zeke, but man, oh man. Too much to handle with Chiazzo. Yeah, but unfortunately, again, that moment Zeke took, and I understand why you're excited, you're ready to fly. Had he just charged in perhaps sooner? Oh God, we get here from Chiazzo. Come on! Oh, what? And just when you thought there might be a shred of decency in Francisco Chiazzo, sicking Breach Port Ayala on Big Johnny Z. Absolutely disgusting display by these two. There's no reason for this. Of course, it's easy to beat up a man after the match. Just a disgusting display. Yeah, Billy's trying to stop these guys, but good luck. Absolutely despicable. Francisco Chiazza, Rich Port Ayala. Horrible individuals. Completely unnecessary. But unfortunately, record books will say victory for Francisco Chiazzo. Soft and liquor that we trace Got some egos to the face Baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make Everything just fade away Cause she's <sighs> yeah, so I went out there And I put my heart and soul into that match I put everything you taught me Into that match And in the end Well, you're the teacher And you know my limitations but afterwards, 
what you and Rich Ayala had did, not acceptable. I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. And next time I come to Proving Ground, I'm gonna remember this. And you are gonna remember me. Come see Proving Ground Live every Friday night at Ritchie Racquetball and Sports Club in Port Ritchie, Florida at 7 p.m. Step inside the new WWN Training Center for an experience like no other. Proving Ground is a night of fun for the whole family. Tickets are available at the door and seating is limited. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. What is Eric Curtis doing? Eric Curtis is doing Eric Curtis things. Not surprising reaction from the WWN faithful here in attendance at WWN Proving Ground at Delo. You've seen everything that's went down with financially stable, Bud Heavy, Benji Neptune, Frickin' Strange. We're going to see a little bit of a payoff perhaps here tonight. Did you guys miss us? Oh. You think Rick Baines is going to stop me? You think anybody's going to stop us? You're wrong. You're dead wrong. Yeah, this thing's been absolutely out of control from parking lot attacks and switch up of alliances. This thing has been just indescribable almost. Back in episode 10, it was financially stable, but heavy. Facing off against Benji Neptune, Stephen Frick, and John Strange. And things just absolutely broke down, and it was going to be a commissioner. Rick Thames coming and making the point, look, all you guys, go home a week. I'm keeping you off. You're not going to be on episode 11. Hence the comment from Financially Stable, did you miss us? And I think it was a resounding no. Yeah, Eric Curtis, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, financially stable, taking advantage of the distraction there. And of course, these men became tangled up, tangled up back in episode nine when Bud Heavy turned on Benji Neptune. It was a Texas Tornado Lumberjack match, and, and that's when Frickin' Strange came out, really to save Benji from a three-on-one beatdown. And, what got them into financially stable's business and already mentioned the six-man tag from episode 10 but right now tag team opportunity for things to come to a head here and the very cocky financially stable think they may have a easy work of freaking strange not looking like that d -Lo. 
This is an interesting combination here, uh, Frick and Strange, Stephen Frick and John Strange. Um, I don't know how to say it, but I, I think these guys both might have a screw loose. Oh, I'm going to concur. Freaking strange. <laughs> they nearly destroyed each other, and they came out friends. How many people can say that? Absolutely. A, a mutual respect after beating the crap out of each other in a uh, fun house of death match. The distraction here. Eric Curtis, Connor McKay gave Winston Bentley the third time to climb under the ring to get the attack. That's the kind of guy Winston Bentley III is. He will climb under the ring to come from behind you. Financially stable, uh, or maybe um, deceptive. You know, at first you might look at these two guys and think, ah, they're not much, but the intelligence, the, the manipulating, just two conniving individuals that will do anything to get what they want. Well, we've already seen Eric Curtis as well coming in and just like earlier in this very matchup, a number of times Eric Curtis has helped out financially stable and Connor McKay now tagging to Winston Bentley the third. McKay is a hard hitting dude because Bentley is the smack talker for the team. And it's gonna be an assisted Russian leg sweep. What a boot to Frick. Now the pin. You notice Strange was already on his way into the ring, D'Lo. <laughs> the fact that John Strange finds a way to get out of the mental asylum each and every week here at WWE Proving Ground, that in and of itself blows my mind. Yeah, I wonder who's letting him out, because... He's pretty consistent. Speaking of consistent, Winston Bentley putting Frick down into that armbar right in the center of the ring. It's smart. You got to give it to Winston Bentley. But unfortunately for Bentley, it takes a lot to keep down Frick and wrench him back in there. Could you imagine a submission? And forcing the pin. And it's a great way to escape, but... The clothesline from Bentley just following right back up. And as Connor's tagged in here, it's looking like the unit financially stable. They know how to pull the strings. John Strange being provoked into the ring. It's a mugging here, D'Lo. Absolutely. And the pin. Yeah, I do not feel for our official here. Or should I say, I do feel for our official here. I do not envy <laughs> Yeah, was the thought that half came out of my mind. Billy Grace having to deal with financially stable. Eric Curtis. And, of course, here's Stephen Frick finally getting back to his feet, trying to fight off Connor McKay. But the lariat from McKay rocks Frick. And is this going to be enough? Only two. To your earlier point with the, the referee, he's got definitely got his hand full here. These things, these matches, have a way of breaking down. And financially stable definitely seem to have a lack of respect for the referees and officials here at WWN. Yeah, and as McKay takes out Stephen Frick. Remember, Winston Bentley's already tagged in. John Strange. Not the legal man for freaking strange, and I guess just in case the official didn't see it, we're gonna make sure a tag sound occurred. How can anybody like financially stable? It's a mystery, Trevin. I don't think I've been more turned off by any set of individuals here in my decade with the World Wrestling Network. Financially Stable takes the cake. Ooh, what a chop by Frick, starting to fight back. Ooh, ooh. But unfortunately, now Connor tagging himself in. Fortunately for Frick, again, the unit that is financially stable is in control here. Don't you get it now? Don't you get it? 
Oh, here now the jaw jacking. Yeah, that's what they're known for, especially Winston. Is Winston now tagged in? You notice while Frick's in trouble, financial stable's all about pop circumstance. Frick being choked, the quick tag here to Connor McKay, who's of course choking while the official doesn't see it. I, I, as much as I hate to admit it, it's, it sounds strategy, Trevin. Keeping the man in their corner, cutting the ring off. And that's absolutely what Financial Stable's done, is, is Winston Bentley now in, and perhaps was thinking the back suplex, but instead, huge freaking spear. Take it out, Winston Bentley, but the question now, d is can Frick make it to his corner? This is the big opportunity. Can he make it to John Strange? The insane John Strange. Count of four. Just making it over. John Strange now tagged in. So was Connor McKay, though. But of course, John Strange, the fresher man. Like a house of fire. Inverted atomic drop. Bentley's in trouble. So is Connor McKay. Poof. Members of Financially Stable taking a beating here at the hands of John Strange. And now Frick's coming back to life, too. What a cannonball. Oh! What do we got here from frickin' Strange? Dueling Death Valley drivers, is that enough? No, just barely. Connor McKay gets a shoulder up. WWE faithful, get behind freaking Strange. D'Lo, you're a former ACW Tag Team Champion, as I pointed out at the top of the top of the hour. So my question for you is, as a tag team specialist, when things start to break down like this, how do you take advantage? Well, usually, usually you want to look to isolate one guy, get his partner out of the ring, and try to work a double team. And that was a very long do -si do And you noticed Financially Stable is able to take advantage of exactly like your advice, John Strange. Isolated at this moment. Of course, he's the legal man caught by that neck breaker. Pin. Broken up by Stephen Frick. Ooh. Hard break up. But to your point, once again, in the, in the chaos here, it's really going to come down to which team is able to take advantage of the numbers game. And Winston just got tossed out. Connor McKay is being left. Fish will give it a lot of latitude. And the side effect taken out. Connor McKay. And where's John Strange going? What an elbow. Is that it? No, Bud Heavy. You got to be kidding me. What the hell? Where did Bud Heavy come from? I told you, Trevor, these things usually have a way of breaking down. Absolute madness here. I didn't even know Bud Heavy was here tonight, D'Lo. No, I had no idea. Looks like this one's going to be thrown out. And the official take it out. And the last time we saw these individuals, it was Rick Thames who said, attacking on the official, out of control, unacceptable. What is our commissioner going to do? Oh, is that Benji? I thought Benji Neptune was injured. Well, he's back like a house of fire, even in the odds. Not surprisingly, like Benji wanting his hands on Bud Heavy. Oh, yeah, some bad blood there. who turned his back on Benji. And if it wasn't for Frickin' Strange, it might have been the end of Benji Neptune. And of course, financially stable orchestrated the whole thing. Money talks, Trevin. Money talks. What time is it? 
absolute chaos here at the end of WWE Improving Ground. Any parting thoughts, D'Lo? Rick Thames has got his work cut out for him here. With these six men, just absolute chaos. There you have it, the match being officially ruled a disqualification victory for frickin' Strange. Definitely far from over, Trevin. Yeah, 100% agree, D'Lo. What a night it's been here, at WWN Proving Ground. For D'Lo Jordan, I'm Trevin Adams. WWNLive.com for all things World Wrestling Network.